Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Overnight, a large backup on I-37 South. Just ahead on GMSA, the latest on why police are investigating two drivers linked to the incident. President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are making their final arguments as record numbers cast their ballots. We have the latest on the presidential race. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 70 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, October 18th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Did you make it outside at all yesterday? I was outside all day yesterday. Good for you. And Sarah was correct. By noon, it cleared up. Yeah. I didn't have to water my plants because I think we got enough ground mm. coverage with that water. It's interesting that you say by noon it cleared up because for you it was it was sunny at noon, but there were other parts of the city that were under cloud cover until like 5 p.m. That was me. Really? Yeah, me yeah. too as well. It was so a movie day. Wow. Yeah, th those clouds helped keep things cool yesterday for us. And you'll remember yesterday we started off the day at 59 degrees. Well, it's 70 degrees <laughs> right now outside with mostly cloudy skies. And so we're already starting off warmer than we were this time yesterday. Uh, and the day ahead is definitely going to be a warm one. Now here in San Antonio, visibility is all right in downtown San Antonio. But meanwhile, we're seeing lowered visibility out toward Port S.A. and Castroville and down toward Pleasanton as well. A mix of uh, probably drizzle and some fog out for those areas. So I really cannot rule out some patch fog patchy drizzle early this morning but unlike yesterday our clouds are going to quickly clear this morning here's a look at yesterday's high temperatures only 74 degrees in San Antonio. There's a little bit more sun out toward New Braunfels where it got up to 80 and then look up toward Del Rio 87 for the high well above the temperature in San Antonio because they saw plenty of sun. So we are not going to be that cool. Again, we're at 70 degrees right now. We're quickly going to see these skies clear and by lunch it'll be fairly sunny. It'll be breezy today with the south wind at 10 to 15 gusting up to 20 miles per hour and in the afternoon a high temperature of 88 and it'll be muggy outside uh, with plenty of sunshine. So a very summer like day today. But coming up, I've got to look at a wishy-washy front that's going to try to make up its mind if it wants to move through San Antonio or not. There's a lot to talk about in the forecast, so I hope you'll stick around and I'll tell you what I mean when I say wishy-washy cool front coming up in a bit. Max. Hey, Sarah, new information this morning after a major backup on the highway on the city's north side. Police initially called out to I-37 and 410 close to midnight after a wreck involving a motorcyclist. Moments later at the same scene, a distracted driver crashed into another car. Our Alicia Barrera is live downtown with the latest. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, let's start off with that major crash that sent one man to the hospital with very serious injuries. Police say it involves a motorcyclist, and they tell us that that man was riding his motorcycle headed southbound on I-37 around 11.45 last night. So again, if you were on the road around that time, I-37 and Loop 410, this is what was going on. On the motorcycle, the motorcyclist intended to get on the entrance ramp of Loop 410, but instead, unfortunately, hit that guardrail. The impact caused the man to fly from his motorcycle until landing on the shoulder of I-37. In the video, you can also see how that motorcycle ended up on the grass. And traffic, we know, was reduced to one lane. Moments later, as police tended to that scene, another crash. A distracted driver rear-ended another vehicle after police say the driver was trying to see what was going on instead of keeping their eyes on the road. We know traffic was backed up for about an hour, and the scene was eventually cleared. And the only injuries that police say were reported were of that motorcyclist. They weren't hit by another vehicle, but the impact with that guardrail and the impact on the ground caused him to suffer a broken leg and head trauma. We know he was rushed to Bamsey Hospital in serious condition. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. San Antonio police officer Umberto Zuniga, who is facing a felony sexual assault charge, has been fired, according to city records. The arrest affidavit reads Zuniga accused of sexually assaulting a woman he met through a dating website. The affidavit also reads he told the woman not to call police because, quote, no one would believe her. The 42 year old was arrested back on August 6th, released on bond the same day. He was handed an indefinite suspension just two days after.
Now let's take a look at the COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. Health officials reporting 187 new cases and no new deaths, which means there is a total of 60,629 total cases since the pandemic started. The death toll stands at 1,211 people who have died from this virus. 192 people are in the hospital with 81 in the ICU and 29 on ventilators. And we are in the middle of this pandemic, but we are also in the middle of an election. President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden making their final arguments to voters as the race for the White House enters its final weeks. Each of the candidates are hitting the road looking to secure votes in must-win battleground states. This as record numbers cast their ballots. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the details. With just 16 days until Election Day, the race for the White House is playing out across several battleground states President Trump carried four years ago. The president will spend today with supporters in Las Vegas, Reno, Carson City, Nevada, and Southern California. He held outdoor events in Michigan and Wisconsin Saturday. Few masks worn in the crowd, but no social distancing. And that's during, and we're rounding the corner. We got the vaccines, all that, but even without it, we're rounding the corner. You'll see it. We're rounding the corner, and we have unbelievable. The vaccines are unbelievable. Democratic challenger Joe Biden, who was off the trail on Saturday, slammed Trump for holding a rally in Wisconsin, a state that's seeing a record number of daily COVID cases. In a statement, Biden said in part, Wisconsin is in the grips of one of the worst coronavirus outbreaks in the country. We've lost far too many lives to this pandemic, and the sad fact is it didn't have to be this way. Biden will head to North Carolina later today for a rally in Durham. His running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, set to return to campaigning Monday after suspending travel last week after an aide tested positive for COVID-19. Harris tested negative. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, the Calwood Fire forcing emergency evacuation orders in Jamestown, Colorado. The Calwood Fire forcing the closing of several roads in Boulder County. The Boulder Office of Emergency Management estimating 900 homes within that evacuation area. Colorado firefighters have been pushed to the limit in recent weeks. Another situation that they are dealing with simultaneously, the Cameron Peak Fire still burning near the city of Fort Collins. It is the largest wildfire in the state's history burning more than 187,000 acres. The size of the Calwood fire not yet reported. Well, dozens of people marched near the school of a teacher who was beheaded by an 18 year old man near Paris. According to the French anti-terrorist prosecutor Jean Francois Ricard, the attacker had approached students outside the school asking them to point out their teacher. A police official says they had discussed in freedom class of the, the class of freedom of speech using pictures from the magazine Charlie Hebdo went in published car caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad Islam prohibits images of the Prophet asserting that they lead to idolatry. Time now 608 70 degrees out. Well, domestic violence hotlines saw reports soar when the pandemic hit. Now those calls have disappeared, but this might not be a good sign. Still ahead on GMSA, we tell you what you can do to make a difference. And we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Buddy Walk, but this year, because of the pandemic, like so many things, it is virtual. We explain next. Let's take a look outside with live cam. It feels a bit muggy out there today. A bit. A bit, yeah. <laughs> my hair did not like it. 70 degrees out there. Sarah Spivey will let you know what your Sunday forecast looks like when we come back. Welcome back. October is National Down Syndrome Awareness Month, and yesterday marked the 20th anniversary of the Buddy Walk. Because of the pandemic, the Down Syndrome Association of South Texas had to hold the event virtually. Participants asked to walk around their own neighborhoods, share videos and pictures with the association. Well, the goal of the event is to bring awareness to those with Down Syndrome and their families and to raise money for programs that benefit them. You can um, donate for the Buddy Walk, or you can just make a, a regular donation to us. You can also sign up to volunteer for us. We're going to need those volunteers um, during the critical times as we start ramping services back up and getting hopefully back together. Down syndrome affects more than 1,200 families in San Antonio and across other South Texas cities. 
and I looked in that video like it was a good day to walk around. You said you got some sunshine. I was stuck in clouds all day. It was a stay home, watch movies kind of day. Yeah, I mean, for the most of the part, I was inside, and then later in the afternoon, when the, when the clouds disappeared. Yeah. Outside, you know, because it wasn't too hot yesterday. No, it was actually very beautiful yesterday. Temperatures were in the upper 70s for most folks. Now, here in San Antonio, we're going to see the skies clear quicker than they did yesterday. So today is going to be a warm one for us. But for now, we do have clouds this morning, and even in some areas, especially west of downtown San Antonio along Highway 90 closer to Port SA. We've got some indications that there are some drizzle. There is some drizzle going on out there and potentially even some patchy fog as well. But at the airport where we get our official reading, it is 70 degrees and dew points are pretty high. They're in the upper 60s and so that humidity is back. We've got 90% humidity and winds from the south at about five miles per hour. Here's where the visibility is a little bit lower out toward Hondo. You can see visibility down to seven miles down to two and a half in Uvalde, down to nearly zero in Pleasanton. So Pleasanton could be seeing some fog and some drizzle. In those areas, temperatures are a little bit cooler. 67 in Hondo, 64 in Pleasanton, 64 in Kerrville, 64 in Uvalde. Meanwhile, 70s generally east of San Antonio, 70 degrees at the airport, 73 in New Braunfels, 71 in Gonzales, and 73 in Austin. So like I said, we are seeing some clouds out there. And the reason for that is that humidity has increased drastically. This is a look at the 24 hour dew point change. So dew point is a measure of humidity and dew point temperatures have gone up about 10 to 20 degrees in the last 20 hours, 24 hours. So it is noticeably more muggy outside as you step outside the door today. And I want to show you the future cast because look how these skies clear. By noon, we should be looking at mostly sunny skies around San Antonio and in fact around all of the KSAT 12 viewing area. That compared to yesterday where in parts of San Antonio, the sun didn't even shine until 5 p.m. And so because of that, it's going to be hot today. Temperatures should be close to 90 degrees, running about 5 to 6 degrees above the average high temperature. Uh, near 90 in New Braunfels and Seguin, 88 in JBSA Randolph, 88 around downtown San Antonio, 89 Stone Oak, 91 in Castroville. Areas off to the west are going to be in the 90s today, uh, near 90 in Lake Hills as well. So if you're planning out your Sunday, it looks great for outdoor activities, just a little bit on the toasty side. Uh, we'll be seeing skies clear very soon here and we'll be looking at a sunny afternoon 88 for that high temperature and then south winds will be breezy at times we could potentially have a gust up to about 20 miles per hour or so so that breeze is going to feel nice even though yeah it will be muggy and it will be warm today let's take a look at the national weather pattern that snow that i showed you yesterday that was up in the northern tier of the united states has moved on down to the central plains nebraska iowa midwest area getting some good snowfall temperatures behind this front are very cold in the teens in parts of Montana, 25 in Casper, Wyoming, 31 in Minneapolis. And this front, it's it's going to be wishy-washy. I used that word before the break. What I mean by that is it's likely going to stall to the north of San Antonio, but we'll be on the edge here in San Antonio. Now we're not going to see temperatures in the 40s. The panhandle will start off in the 40s tomorrow morning and we'll be in the 70s tomorrow morning and it'll be muggy and we'll have areas of drizzle tomorrow morning as well. And then this front is just going to kind of stall out over parts of the hill country and out toward Austin as well. And so in up to Austin, there's those areas could be in the 60s. Meanwhile, it could be near 90 degrees uh, down near Laredo. And so we'll be kind of right on the edge there here in San Antonio. So I'm going 85, mostly cloudy with some morning drizzle and variable winds. Winds will kind of be all over the place with that front uh, on our doorstep. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's just going to wash out and it'll be warm for the rest of the week. Only a 10% chance for a stray shower uh, during the day and we'll start off just about every day with morning clouds and afternoon sunshine. Then we have indications that we could get another front on Friday. This one will be on the weaker side but it should drop our high temperatures into the 70s by the weekend, which is which is pretty nice. Come on, wishy-washy front. Yeah, let's see <laughs> if it, somebody. Let's see if it's got <laughs> enough oomph to make it through San Antonio tomorrow. Uh, again, with the high temperature near 85, I'm thinking that the cool air will be well to our north. Do you have any motivational quotes to give the wishy-washy front? You can do it. There you go. <laughs> that was it. That was the fire they needed. <laughs> 617, 70 degrees out. Well, a new robot shaped like a squid? 
will take a huh. swim at UC San Diego for research the purpose of the squid bot still ahead. And it is another layer to the COVID crisis, a rise in domestic violence just ahead, ways to protect yourself and protect others. Welcome back. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Back in 2019, nearly 20 people every minute were physically abused by their partner here in the United States. Only 34% of people who are injured by their intimate partners receive medical care. And now, with widespread lockdowns, financial strain, and social isolation, these abusive patterns may be getting worse. That's right. At the beginning of the COVID lockdown, domestic violence hotlines saw calls and reports soar. But now, those calls have all but disappeared. Those that are familiar with domestic violence know this might not be a good sign. Stephanie Serna takes a look at what you can do to make a difference. Domestic violence, an issue commonly hidden behind closed doors. So it's all about power and control. But now COVID has closed all of our doors. Anytime you have any kind of natural disaster, any kind of crisis, abusers become stressed. And when they become stressed, that power need, the need for power and control increases. So what are the best ways to help? Well, the most important message you can give is, I'm worried about you and I'm here for you. Watch for red flags like rudeness, possessiveness, isolation, and unexplained injuries. Reach out to your troubled loved one as often as you can. Only offer up your home if you also have a safety plan in place. Remember, abusers are likely to come after you as well. Decide on a code word and offer resources like prepaid phones, emergency hotline numbers, or apps like One Love that offer free abuse risk assessments that you can download on your phone to offer to them. But if your loved one isn't yet able to take those steps, never attack or blame victims for staying. Just leaving is actually the number one time when most women are murdered. If you or someone you know needs help, call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. That's 1-800-799-7233. And right now on KSET.com, we have been following stories about domestic violence closely. You can find them in our section called Loving in Fear. Stephanie Serna, KSET 12 News. Time now, 623, 70 degrees out. A squishy swimming robot takes, <laughs> you know, in Little uh, Finding Nemo? Squishy. Squishy. <laughs> All right. Well, he takes a dip to protect flora and fauna. We have more next on GMSA. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. Researchers in California engineering a high tech and highly charming aquatic robot to assist with deep sea dives. Super cute. The camera toting self-powered squid bot was created at UC San Diego. Take a look. It's made from mostly soft parts and a few 3D printed and laser cut rigid components. Like a squid, the bot propels itself by creating jets of water using its body movement. The robot is designed to assist on explorations that experts say are essential to protecting flora and fauna. So look at that, it's pretty cool. I like it when it inks, it's like, <laughs> you know when Finding Nemo, when the squid accidentally inks? No, oh. he's like, oops, it's so cute. <laughs> Time now, 627, 70 degrees out. Well, more than 22 million voters have cast their ballots so far. Next on GMSA, we tell you what the early voting trends could mean for the election. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning, October 18th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. And I didn't do any yard work yesterday. Mm -hmm. I rested, but today I'm probably going to have to get out there, Sarah Spivey. Yeah, well, it'll be hot in the afternoon, but it should be pretty nice over the next few hours this morning. We do have some areas of patchy fog and potentially even some patchy drizzle, mainly to the south and to the west of San Antonio. Visibility down to about a mile and three quarters in Pleasanton, down to five in Port S.A., down to seven in Hondo, but we are seeing improvement there. We're starting off the day with plenty a cloud cover, but those clouds will clear a lot more quicker than they did yesterday. Yesterday, some clouds lingered around until the afternoon, but today they'll be gone here by about probably noon. Honestly, it's 70 in San Antonio, 73 New Braunfels, 72 in Canyon Lake. Look how much cooler it is to the west. 66 at Rio Medina, 67 in Hondo, 66 in Tarpley, 66 at Port S.A. and 64 at Bernie Stage Airfield. So a nice cool start for the hill country, but not as cool as yesterday. Yesterday we were waking up at 59 degrees 
degrees. Here's that yard work forecast that Sarah was talking about. We are going to see temperatures climb to near 88 degrees in the afternoon, but it should be good for yard work, especially if you can handle the warmer weather. And I know we can as <laughs> San Antonians and South Central Texans. Uh, so ahead, I'll talk about a couple of things. We'll talk about the very warm forecast today. We'll talk about our wishy-washy cold front. It's my favorite word of the day, wishy-washy, and how hot Tober continues in the week ahead in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Police investigating two drivers linked to a major backup overnight. Police initially called out to the crash on I-37 and Loop 410 close to midnight. That accident catching the attention of other drivers and eventually causing one to crash. Alicia Beretta is live downtown with more from police. Good morning, Alicia. Were there any injuries? Yes, good morning. A head injury and broken bones. And police tell us it's only one victim that suffered the injuries, and that's that motorcyclist. Uh, police say it happened while he was riding his motorcycle on I-37 near Loop 410. This all happened around 11.45 last night. Again, he was headed south on I-37 and hit the guardrail for the entrance ramp of Loop 410. The man flew from his bike and landed on the shoulder of I-37. Video shows his bike also ended up in that same area. Investigators are still working to determine exactly what caused that motorcyclist to crash. But moments later, while still at the scene, another crash. Police say a distracted driver was too focused on figuring out why there was a backup instead of keeping their eyes on the road and unfortunately ended up rear ending another vehicle. No injuries to report on that second accident. Police tell us that traffic was backed up for quite a while, about 45 minutes to an hour, but eventually was cleared. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Here in Bear County, we are already at 186,000 people voting in person and voting early, and we are not alone in seeing high voter turnout. The number of voters turning out for early voting is shattering records in some states. This week, long lines seen in high key swing states. A number of those ballots cast so far grew to more than 22 million people. And while the latest early voting numbers may point to a record turnout in the November election, experts say the trends may not tell us much about who may win the race for the White House. CNN's Meredith Wood has a closer look. Voting early in record numbers in 45 states and D.C., more than 22 million ballots have been cast so far. What we're doing, standing and letting your voice be heard is important. Experts say the latest ballot data shows there are a lot more people voting early than ever before, and Democrats are voting early at a much higher level than Republicans. This week, voters in states where early voting has begun have been waiting in line for hours to cast their ballots. That detailed voting information comes from Catalyst, a data company that provides data analytics and other services to Democrats, academics, and nonprofit issue advocacy organizations. I'd rather be out here doing my civic duty than not. <laughs> um, I don't trust the whole mail-in voting thing, so I will be here and I will sign it and make sure it goes where it needs to go. Meanwhile, we're also seeing a high number of absentee ballot requests. Experts say the surge is due in part to the pandemic. So what do the numbers reveal about a possible election result? One expert says there's no history of early voting during a pandemic, but the trends are telling. At this point, four years ago, far less people were voting early, just about 7 million folks. Now we're up to over 22 million, so triple the number of people have voted so far in this election than the, than the equivalent point. Four years ago. But he cautions just because we know the party affiliation of the voters returning ballots in some states doesn't mean we know who they're voting for. And we can't really predict who is going to actually show up on election day. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. And if you haven't made it out to vote yet and you're concerned about long lines, we want to remind you that right now on KSAT.com, we are keeping track of which sites have the busiest and slowest lines. You can find a full list on KSAT.com slash vote. We also have all you need to know about the elections and what will be on your ballot. Early voting ends October 30th. Remember Election Day, November 3rd. And speaking of voting, public transportation in San Antonio, a big topic of concern. And now the future of VIA is on this year's ballot. If approved, the item on the ballot states that the proceeds of the current 1 8 cent sales tax would be used for advanced public transportation services. 
there are a lot of questions surrounding the current state of via what voters should know about the proposition on the ballot and what's next. That's why this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., the president and CEO of VIA, Jeffrey Arndt, joins us live. And if you have any questions you want answered, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Time now, 636, 73, 70 degrees out. 73, I'm already jumping ahead. I know, heating things up, Max. <laughs> we'll still ahead on GMSA. A new movie out this week recounts events from more than 50 years ago. We have a preview of the trial of the Chicago 7. National Coming Out Day celebrated every October 11th. Next on GMSA, we have more on what email guidance sent to SAISD principals and what they say about highlighting this day. Okay, just to clarify, it's 70 degrees, Max, not mm, 73 degrees. Not 73. But it is muggy out there. And Sarah Spivey, like she's been saying, hinting at it's a little warmer today than what we enjoyed yesterday. What our Sunday looks like, what our week looks like, Sarah will let us know when we come back. Case at 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. At Calaveras aren't just the painted skulls you see every year. Calaveras can be written and they are humorous and a poetic Day of the Dead tradition. A calavera is written about someone who's still alive. To poke fun or to bring somebody down in the form of a pun or satirical piece of poetry. And it is usually written about someone who is prominent either in politics, in sports, in entertainment. Generally, they all die in the calavera. Not in reality, but figuratively. Calaveras are not written about people who are already dead, and that's because a person cannot defend themselves. It's cowardly, I think, to make fun of someone who has already died. So to write a good calavera, you strip that person down to the very essence. You pick out that quality that you either like or dislike, and then you write it in a form that makes fun of it, and that makes that person come alive for you and I. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. National Coming Out Day is celebrated as a turning point in the lives of millions across the globe. It's a special day for members of the LGBTQ community this month. An email guidance issued to San Antonio ISD principals informed them to refrain from highlighting the annual awareness day, but some say it should not be overlooked. The district says it was a it was a process issue and they are working to be as inclusive as possible while recognizing all of their SAISD family. National Coming Out Day is observed on October 11th each year, commemorating the 1987 National March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights. But the day also recognizes coming to terms with one's own identity and opening and sharing that with the world. A former SAISD student believes the district holds a responsibility. It is such a monumental turn in so many LGBTQ queer people's lives to acknowledge that struggle is acknowledging our students and giving them um, a safe place to express themselves. Well, San Antonio ISD tells us tomorrow during tomorrow night's board meeting, they plan to share an update, including an annual calendar of days to acknowledge and to celebrate. All right, heading outside 70 degrees to start your Sunday morning. You said you got to see some sunshine. I was stuck in the doldrums, the clouds. It was a perfect day to stay inside, enjoy some. I watched uh, The Village. Scary movie. Great, oh my goodness. Great movie. For Halloween and everything. Yeah, Can I let in the... people in on a little uh, behind the scenes? Are you guys okay sure, with that? Sure, yeah. Go for it. So every time you see that commercial about chili dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, let's see the dance. We are dancing. Chili, chili. Chili, chili. Chili, chili. chili. That's great. <laughs> so if you see that commercial, over here. just know that we're we dancing. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and just know that it's going to be a warm day, a lot warmer than yesterday. Yesterday, we had the benefit of some cloud cover around San Antonio through the afternoon. And so that kept temperatures in the 70s yesterday. 
But guess what? We're starting off in the 70s today, so it is going to be much warmer than yesterday. 70 degrees outside, mostly cloudy to cloudy skies, overcast skies. We've got good visibility here in San Antonio, but a little bit off to the west, so Port S.A., Castroville. Uh, there are some lowered visibilities from areas of fog out there. Uh, temperatures and dew points are very close to each other. That's allowing for some fog and humidity to be high at 90 percent. 64 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 65 in Bandera. The wake up temperature out toward Hondo 67 degrees. You'll notice that it's a smidge cooler out to the west as well. 63 in Lost Maples, where I wonder if they're getting some good foliage up in Lost Maples. That'll be something to check out a little bit later. Uh, Canyon Lake and New Braunfels sitting in the low 70s. A wider view, low 70s out toward LaGrange, College Station in Austin. 68 degrees in Del Rio. Del Rio is going to be warm today. Probably going to see temperatures topping off in the 90s. So in the satellite imagery today and this morning, you can see that the clouds have moved back in this morning, but they are going to clear very quickly. Here's a look at the future cast. You can see those skies clearing quickly even before lunch. By noon, we should be seeing mostly sunny skies all across the KSAT 12 viewing area, and it will be warm. 88 for the high in San Antonio, but elsewhere, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, low to mid 90s this afternoon. The average high temperature this time of year is 84 around San Antonio, so not too much warmer than the average, but definitely on the warm side. It's going to be quite the contrast to yesterday. So if you do want to get some outdoor activities done today, it's going to be beautiful, just a little muggy and a little warm, but we're used to that. Speaking of mugginess, humidity is back in a big way. Dew points in the upper 60s and near 70 degrees. Those are summertime dew points, gives you bad hair day, and you can feel that humidity at when you step outside. So here's a look at today's forecast. Clearing skies during the morning hours will be partly cloudy and breezy at noon. South winds up to 15 miles per hour. Muggy in the afternoon with tons of sunshine, 88 degrees. Showing you our wishy-washy cool front now. The front is creating some snowfall in parts of Nebraska, some of their first snowfall of the season. Temperatures in the teens behind this front. This is a really dense area of cold air, but it's fairly shallow and it's going to wash out quite a bit as it moves into North Texas. What we are wondering is if this is going to have enough oomph to give us any kind of cooler air around San Antonio. What we know is that tomorrow morning there's going to be a big contrast across the state. 40s in Amarillo, 70s around San Antonio, and then this front is just going to fall apart. Uh, there will is the potential for it to be in the 60s up in the hill country toward Austin as well, and in the 80s around San Antonio, 90s down toward Laredo. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think that we'll wake up tomorrow with areas of drizzle and overcast skies. It's a lot like yesterday. That front is going to stall out. We won't be as warm as today, but we're still going to be warm. 85 degrees for the high temperature. And then in the week ahead, we'll have morning drizzle again on Tuesday and a small chance 10% for a stray shower or storm through Friday. Friday, we get a front and it looks like that'll cool us down into the 70s. So. Let's hope that some of the computer models are correct and we get a little cooler than 85 tomorrow, but still I think 85 is a fair compromise right now given the wishy-washy nature of this front. There you go. Are you going to hit the garden today? Uh, I need to. I need to. It's It's been impressive. Thank For those you. of you who don't know, Sarah Coast, the master gardener. I'm not a and master gardener. It is very, very impressive. <laughs> she doesn't want master gardeners to come at her, but no, she does a very they, impressive job. It's a, it's a big title. That's fair. All right. 648, 70 degrees out. Well, a new movie streaming right now about the protest at the 1968 Democratic National Convention and the resulting trial. We take a look at the trial of the Chicago 7 movie. Welcome back. A new movie out this week recounts events from more than 50 years ago. Here's the thing, though. Some people today finding it all too relevant. CNN's David Daniel has a look. At the defense table, Abby Hoffman, Jerry Rubin, Dave Dellinger, Renny Davis, Lee Weiner, John Froines, Tom Hayden, and Bobby Seale. These defendants had a plan, and the plan was to incite a riot. The trial of the Chicago 7 looks at the protests at the 1968 Democratic National Convention and the resulting trial. Give me a moment, would you, friend? I've never been on trial for my thoughts before. Writer-director Aaron Sorkin's A-list cast includes Sasha Baron Cohen, who lobbied hard to play protest leader Abby Hoffman. If I hadn't cast Sasha as Abby, it, he would have just stood in front of my front door um, uh, until I did cast him as Abby. 
there wasn't an option there. <laughs> if we leave here without saying anything about why we came in the first place, it'll be heartbreaking. Emmy winner Jeremy Strong plays Jerry Rubin, Hoffman's fellow yippie. Jerry Rubin uh, was a very liberating uh, uh, place to live for a while. And, and um, so I was drawn to the role. Their courtroom foe, Judge Julius Hoffman, played by Tony winner Frank Langella. Aaron wrote me a great part. It was, it was a delicious, there were lots of things to do. You know, I, I didn't just say, approach the bench, please. My trial's begun without my lawyer. The court assumes you are being represented by the Black Panther sitting behind you. Sorkin and the cast are quick to draw parallels between the protests of 1968 and 2020. We thought it was plenty relevant when we were making it. We, we didn't need it to get more relevant, but it did. It's an amazing moment in time that is, you know, being echoed uh, now, uh, both in the sense that it feels like the center cannot hold, and also in the sense that there is a, a reawakening of a sense of hope and the possibility of, of change. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. By the way, if you counted eight defendants and wondered why it's called the trial of the Chicago 7, Boppy Seal received a mistrial partway through that trial. That's right. You can watch it right now on Netflix. Time now is 6.53, 70 degrees out. Let's take a look on what's coming up next on Good Morning America. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA, the largest wildfire in the history of Colorado is only growing this morning. The evacuations and the forecast, plus the race for the White House, the candidates hitting the battleground states and the airwaves as early voters turn out in record numbers. We'll tell you about the celebrities weighing in this morning. And finally, with coronavirus cases climbing all over the country, we've got an exclusive look inside a COVID testing lab. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. A major backup overnight on the city's south side after a motorcyclist flies off his bike and lands on the shoulder of I-37 South near Loop 410. This happened around 1145 last night. That motorcyclist hit the guardrail for the entrance ramp of Loop 410 and flew from his bike landing on the shoulder of I-37. Video shows his bike also ended up in that same area and moments later, while still at the scene, Police say another crash was reported. Police say a distracted driver was too focused on figuring out why there was a backup instead of keeping their eyes on the road and ended up rear ending another vehicle. Police say the only injuries to report were of that initial accident that they were tending to the motorcyclist. He suffered a broken leg and head trauma and was rushed to BMC where he remains listed in serious condition. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And visibilities are improving, but it's still fairly cloudy out there right now. Temperatures are hovering right around 70 degrees around San Antonio, upper 60s west and to the north of San Antonio as well. We're going to see skies quickly clear here, and it's going to be a very warm Sunday. High temperature of 88 degrees, south winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour, so a bit breezy as well. Tomorrow, a front is going to stall to our north. We'll be a couple of degrees cooler, but we'll start off with areas of drizzle tomorrow and it should be mostly cloudy for most of the day in the week ahead upper 80s for the high temperature so it's going to be a warm uh, week of October but another front is expected to arrive Friday by the way even though we're running a little bit warmer than average you know these week cool fronts in October are very normal if you're worried about not getting cool in San Antonio don't worry we've still got a lot of fall left. We've still got all of winter left, so it's just the way it is in October in San Antonio. What was it like? Two years ago, three years ago, we actually saw snow. Yeah, something like that. Ooh. Yeah, and yeah, ice. Of anyone crazy? It was, it was a good time. Maybe yeah. we'll have another wild winter. Maybe there we will. <laughs> Let's see. We Let's talk about yet. it. Let's put it out there. <laughs> all right, sir. Thank you so much. We're gonna take an hour-long break for Good Morning America, but don't worry. We'll be back here at 8 a.m. We have so much to talk about, including leading SA. We're gonna talk to the president and CEO of Via. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Racing and spinning donuts on the road, all to disrupt traffic and destroy property. Just ahead on GMSA, how multiple agencies work together to catch these street racers in the act. And there is so much on the ballot this year on top of the president, your representatives and local leadership. There are issues on the ballot. One of them, public transportation. 
On Leading SA, we speak with the president and CEO of VIA. Break down what you need to know. Oh, wow. You can't really. I think those are just clouds I'm seeing. I don't think it's as much cloud coverage as we had yesterday. But 71 degrees this Sunday morning. Our Sarah Spivey letting us know your Sunday forecast in just a bit. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Costa. Thank you so much for waking up with us. It's Sunday, October 18th. We're halfway through the month. Well, yeah. Yeah. No, a little more, more than that. A little more than halfway. Because math. You were a little surprised <laughs> by the cloud coverage. Sarah, what were we looking at out there? Well, cloud cover. That's there you what we're go. looking outside. Right now, though, you know, yesterday we had clouds for most of the day and today we're going to see these clouds go away fairly soon. In fact, take a look outside every now and then you'll see a glimmer of sunshine there uh, between that cloud deck. But for now we are experiencing complete cloud cover. It's 71 degrees outside and just to put this in perspective for you this time yesterday we were at 59 degrees. So we have warmed up for the start of the day and guess what? It's going to be a warm afternoon as well. I'm showing you high temperatures yesterday. We only got up to 74 in San Antonio. The reason for that, well, we had those clouds around till honestly about 4 or 5 p.m. And that's when the clouds started to break apart. Elsewhere, temperatures got up to near 90 degrees out toward Del Rio because they had sunshine for a good portion of the day. We are already at 71 degrees in San Antonio, so we're going to be much warmer than yesterday. 68 in Hondo, 65 in Uvalde, 65 in Kerrville, 63 in Rock Springs, 67 the wake up temperature in Del Rio, and 72 in Gonzales. Showing you today's forecast skies will start to clear as early as 10 and then by the afternoon we'll have mostly sunny skies. It'll be breezy with the south wind gusting up to 20 miles per hour and muggy with a high temperature near 90 degrees. Now tomorrow there will be a wishy washy cool front. That's the vocab word we're using today to describe tomorrow's cool front. And I'll tell you why it's wishy washy and what we can expect for our weather tomorrow in San Antonio and even across the hill country coming up in just a bit. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Multiple law enforcement agencies having a busy night across San Antonio, working hard to track down drivers who had the intent to race, spin donuts, and even destroy property. Alicia Beretta is live downtown with more from police on the roundup operation that went on throughout the night and led to multiple arrests. Good morning, Alicia. What do we know? Good morning. Well, the big lesson is that nothing posted on social media is really private, even if your group is private. And I myself did a quick search on Facebook this morning. Uh, San Antonio street racing went on some of the groups and saw some of these locations that police were tipped on. So these drivers, what they did posted on Facebook exactly what they were, where they were going to meet, what time. And that's how police ended up ended up starting these arrests. So take a look at some of the drivers that were arrested overnight. According to police, the Facebook post called for drivers to race on the interstate in frontage roads. Street racers did burnouts and spun donuts in parking lots and even destroyed property. But little did they know that law enforcement was already waiting for them at those exact locations to catch them in the act. Agencies, including SAPD Special Crimes, DWI, and Tactical Response Units were present, as well as Bear County Sheriff's Office and Eagle. This roundup started around 8 last night and continued overnight. Investigators say those Facebook posts led to many arrests across the city, including at Roosevelt and Military, Marbach and 410, 410 and Ingram, Highway 151 and Callahan, as well as 281 and Bassey. And police say that they don't have an exact headcount just yet of all the street racers that were arrested. But stick with us here on GMSA in the next half hour. I'll tell you what charges some of them are facing. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also in your top stories this morning, a man is in serious condition after a scary motorcycle crash. San Antonio police tell us the man was traveling southbound on I-37. He crashed into the guardrail on the 410 entrance ramp. That's when officers say the man flew from his bike, landed on the shoulder of 37. He was put in an ambulance, taken to Bamsey, suffered a broken leg and head trauma. As police were tending to the motorcyclist, another driver passing by got distracted and crashed, rear-ending another vehicle. Luckily, no injuries reported in that crash. Now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. Local health officials have reported an increase of 186 cases and no new deaths. When it comes to hospitalizations, there are 192 people in the hospital with 81 of them in ICU and 29 on ventilators. 
Whether it's for work, school, or general travel, people in and around San Antonio rely on public transportation. They rely on VIA. So how does our public transit compare to other big cities around Texas? And what's next? We hope to find those answers this morning. In today's leading essay segment, Jeffrey Arndt, the president and chief executive officer of VIA, joins us for an interview live. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much and for joining us. Max, we will get those answers. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. So right off the bat, why don't we give people kind of a preface to what we're looking at? How would you describe the current condition of public transportation here in San Antonio? And how do we compare with other big cities? Well, if we compare ourselves to the other, uh, the three other large urban areas, which are Austin, Houston, and Dallas, obviously, um, what d really differentiates VIA from those systems is that we have we pursued half of the sales tax level back when VIA was created compared to these other agencies, and the difference between the percentage and also the economic activity makes a substantial difference in what the resources are to support our system. So, just to make it very very simple. We bring in under 200 million uh, a year to support our operation. Dallas brings in 600 million. Houston brings in 758 million on those orders of magnitude. What that means is we have, and we have a very large service area. We're as large as Houston's pretty much, and more than twice the size of Austin or, or Dallas. We have to spread things thin, which means we end up with relatively infrequent service. And that makes the service more difficult to use, the trips longer to take, and people with other options are going to opt for those options when the frequency gets below 20 minutes. Unfortunately, about two thirds of our system is uh, outside of that range. Now, on the good side, let me just say that on the good side, we have a group of 12 peer cities we compare ourselves to. And when you look at the cost to deliver a unit of service, like one hour bus service, we are the second lowest in that group of 12. And when you look at the number of passengers that are carried for every unit of service, of those 12, we are number one. So when you look at globally, the operation, the effectiveness and efficiency, it looks good, but we have rather a meager, or sometimes I say anemic uh, level of service on the street. So what do you think voters should know about the transportation issue on the ballot? Well, we have a plan, keep, keep San Antonio moving, KSAM, and uh, that plan is designed to provide three things with respect to service. Frequency, I just alluded frequency, frequent, fast, and flexible. And so the plan incorporates really one key element for each of those. The first, the frequent, is continuing to invest in high frequency service, especially in, in uh, urban corridors. And we have seen with the city's contribution we've had over the last couple of years that we've gotten double digit percentage increases in ridership as a result of that. The second part, the FAST, goes to rapid transit, what we call advanced rapid transit, and that is uh, transit operating in its own lane at very high frequency every eight to 10 minutes, stopping at stations, very light rail-like, but using rubber tire vehicles, which is, allows us to build twice as much for the same amount of money and get the same benefit. And then flexibility, that goes to our mobility on demand, what we call via link. We are piloting, we finished piloting that actually in the Northeast side, and if you think of it, it's like having a, a zone in which you run a mini uh, zoo, I'm sorry, a mini uh, uh, lift like service where you reserve the trip. The trip arrives within eight minutes in our current system and takes you relatively directly and quickly to your destination. So fa frequent, fast and flexible through frequent bus service, ART, advanced rapid transit and MOD mode, moving people on demand. Okay, now you talked about how we actually spend, I guess, less than a third of what Houston spends. So, yes. question, local leadership that we've talked to, they say that it's not just literally people riding the bus, but it also helps fuel social and economic mobility. Can you explain to voters how important that VIA is to getting people to climb that economic ladder? Oh, t totally. So, first of all, our chair, um, Hope Andrade, former Secretary of State, knows a bit about economic development. And she's, she's often quoted as saying there is no economic de de uh, mobility without physical mobility. And that's totally true. Three quarters of our riders are what one might characterize as the working poor. Three quarters of our riders are riding to work. And guess what? Those people are riding to primarily service jobs. So when you go to a restaurant and you're served, or uh, when you go to a, a health clinic and the person at the front desk 
when people come to San Antonio to visit and uh, the hotel rooms and all are kept clean, often those people that, that provide those services are riding public transportation. And all of that has a huge economic impact on the city if you just take tourism as our number three industry. And, uh, and as a result of that economic impact, the work that these people do and the, and the kind of, of activity they support uh, allows us, frankly, to have a somewhat lower tax tax base than we need or tax tax um, revenue than we need because those industries are, are generating uh, tax. But but on the other hand, these people have to have access to get to those jobs. And that's why public transportation is important. What I would say is if you go to our website, keepsamoving.com, slash events so look for the event that we had a teletown hall meeting this past week um and the the featured panelists were jenna salceda Pereira, uh leo gomez and john hakenos who's an economist out of austin who spent the hour talking about the whole picture of what drives economic development jenna for example uh shared that if you take the amazon that recent amazon competition that one of their factors that they said you had to have was a robust public transportation system. And so there are opportunities that this region likely are for, foregoing because we don't have that available. Thank you so much, Mr. Arndt. Again, for our viewers, it's Jeffrey Arndt, the president and CEO of VIA. You can watch the full interview where he breaks down the VIA proposition on your ballot right now, later on this morning on KSET.com. Thank you, Mr. Arndt. Thank you. And time now, 812, 71 degrees out. Well, making sure kids say, stay in touch with Mexican culture, how teachers and organizers are helping them experience Dia de los Muertos traditions despite the pandemic. And two brothers reflecting on the history of the Million Man March for the event's 25th anniversary with a documentary. We'll explain next. Let's take a look outside with live cam. If we can see anything, it's looking a little clearer this morning, 71 degrees. Sarah Spivey, when we come back, we'll explain that cloud cover, what your Sunday looks like, what the rest of the week looks like when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. After weeks of creating a documentary reflecting on the history of the Million Man March, two brothers were able to bring the project to fruition in the time for the historical event's 25th anniversary. Take a look, Leo and Anthony Edwards started the project back in August. They used footage and photos captured by Leo when he attended the march on October 16th, 1995. They say the experience was breathtaking to see so many men gathered for the purpose of building up their communities. The men say they hope this project inspires others to keep this movement going. To view the documentary's three episodes, you can find a link on our website right now. Just head to ksat.com. Well, Ray Fail and his court are making sure San Antonio students don't miss out on learning about Dia de los Muertos. That's right. This weekend, they created Day of the Dead kits to give school districts here in San Antonio. Inside the kits are Dia de los Muertos items like sugar skulls, candles, and more items handmade in Mexico. They even have a QR code that shows students how to set up their own ofrenda or altar through augmented reality. And although COVID has changed things this year, local teachers are excited students will still get to experience these traditions. I think we're supposed to hear an interview right now, but if you want to see more on this, just head to KSAT.com and to see more of the David Edith stories and Obviously, check out the upcoming virtual parade. We have all of that as well, again, on KSAT.com. And I love the intro that we have for all these stories because it's got a little tune. I You're doing a little dance. I get excited. Yeah. I love I love uh, what our KSAT team has done with oh, this yeah. coverage. It's been great. Really impressive. All right, speaking of some of our KSAT team, let's see, can we throw it over to Sarah? Hey, there guys, go. what's up? So, yeah, we're going to talk about the weather for a second. Uh, yesterday, Sarah, you stayed cloudy at your house until like five, right? But Max, when did you see some sun? I'm not going to lie. I go to sleep around that time. <laughs> so I stayed in, watched movies. It was great. I avoided uh, outside. It, it was a perfect day to just kind of chill. It was like a rainy yeah. Sunday kind of thing. Well, we are going to see sunshine quicker than we did yesterday, and that's going to allow us to warm up. I want you to see the time lapse here as we started off the day. Complete cloud cover out there, but peaks of sunshine every now and then, and you'll see that as soon as the sun rises there. Again, peaks of sunshine, 71 degrees, and it is still uh, fairly cloudy outside, and we even have some areas where we're dealing with uh, some lowered visibility, visibility down to five miles in some places, but right now uh, we are starting off 
almost as warm as we got in the afternoon around San Antonio. We got up to 74 degrees. It's already 71, 72 at New Braunfels, 66 in Pleasanton, a little bit cooler out toward Pleasanton and Hondo and Yavaldi, where temperatures are in the 60s. It's those areas that could be dealing with some fog, some patchy fog this morning uh, and in Pleasant and visibility is down to about two and a half miles, maybe even some light drizzle as well. And in the week ahead, just about every morning, we're going to have morning clouds and drizzle. So keep that in mind. Now, one thing to note is that dew points or the humidity is about 10 to 20 degrees warmer than it was in the morning yesterday. And you'll really feel the mugginess today. And that'll come into play in the afternoon when we see sunshine, warmer temperatures maybe even a little bit of a heat index value this afternoon. So showing you the future cast, those skies quickly clear. All of us will be dealing with complete sunshine in the afternoon, and it's going to be warm around San Antonio. High temperatures in the upper 80s, 88 around downtown San Antonio, 88 Leon Springs, 87 Bernie, uh, 89 in New Braunfels and in Seguin, 89 in Lavernia as well. Out toward Castroville, 91 degrees for the high temperature. It'll be even warmer out toward Del Rio. Temperatures should reach about 94 degrees for the high temperature. So again, we're cloudy right now. We're going to stay cloudy through about noon. We'll have partly cloudy skies then and then in the afternoon, mostly sunny, topping off at 88 between about the hours of 4 and 5 p.m. It'll be breezy at times. Winds will be from the south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts up to about 20 miles per hour and then we'll cool down back into the 70s by 10. All right. I promise you we would talk about that wishy-washy cool front that I mentioned earlier. Look up to the north. You can see some snow across parts of the central plains near Nebraska and the Midwest toward Iowa. The cold front is pushing through the panhandle of Texas right now. These temperatures are really cold, well below freezing up in parts of the Dakotas, Wyoming and Minnesota. Uh, and this dense air is going to continue to spill to the south, but here's the catch. It's going to stall out over North Texas in the hill country so that by the start of the day tomorrow, temperatures will be drastically different across the state of Texas. 40s in the panhandle and will be in the 70s with morning drizzle here in San Antonio tomorrow morning. Then this front is going to stall and fall apart, and it's going to make for a tricky temperature forecast tomorrow. Areas near Austin and the hill country could be in the 60s, but I think here in San Antonio will be in the 80s again with that morning drizzle and variable winds could be up to 90 degrees down near Laredo. So we'll watch that stall front carefully tomorrow, uh, but big takeaways. You're going to want to be a little bit slower on the morning commute tomorrow because of the drizzle uh, and then in the week ahead, it's going to be warm. Temperatures should be in the upper 80s for the high temperatures and then another front moves through on Friday. That'll set up a more pleasant weekend for us. But again, it's it's going to be warm. Hot Tober continues. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. What happens if we go to November and it's still hot? Is it going to be hot Vember? You know, I'll figure out another pun, I guess. I like Sorry. it. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, 821, 71 degrees out. Well, an NFL player on his way to his best season ever. That's right. We are talking Texans. And after the break, we are talking PJ Hall. Stay with us. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is Sunday, so you know we got to talk about the NFL. In the sports this morning, we are gearing up for a full slate of games. I actually just got the notification, no positive tests of COVID-19, so all of the games are on. One of those games, Texans playing the Titans at noon. Can't talk Texans without talking about the defensive tackle, P.J. Hall. After spending his first two seasons with the Raiders, Hall is well on his way to his best season in the NFL. Just five games this season already. He has 21 tackles and a sack. The Seguin High School alum up his game since coming back to the Lone Star State. Really exciting stuff. The Texans could have a better record, but again, they take on the Interdivision rival, the Titans today at noon. We also have the Cowboys tomorrow. Shout out to Texas A&M who won yesterday. Texas had the day off. But it's weird because there's like nine noon games, a couple 3.30 games, and then I don't think there's any Sunday night football tonight. How are you going to handle this today? It's good because I get to go to sleep early and not have to worry of missing any highlights. It's a good day. A tough life for Max. I got a full <laughs> slate ahead of me. Don't worry. All right, 826, 71 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, the latest efforts on passing another stimulus bill. And celebrities stepping in when it comes to the upcoming election. Details on how they are getting people to the polls. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. Thank you so much for joining us on this October 18th. And it doesn't really feel like October 
weather out there. Sarah Spivey, what are you calling it? Hot Tober? Hot Tober. Hot Tober. It's the best I could do, pun wise. It's good. I, mean, I like it. It's keeping it there, going. What else? I mean, I don't think there's any other pun for October and being warm. Hmm. If you can think of one, reach out to me. I'd love to, I'd love to hear. <laughs> but yeah, hot October. Uh, we are. We were nice and cool yesterday and the day before because clouds stuck around yesterday. But today, these morning clouds. They're going to be out of here very soon. Uh, but for now, it is cloudy and 71 degrees outside at the airport, 72 in New, uh, at, in New Braunfels and at JBSA Randolph, 72 in Canyon Lake. It's a little bit cooler out in the hill country. It's 66 degrees in Comfort and in Kerrville, 64 at Bernie Sage Airfield, right on the uh, Bear and Kendall line there. Uh, 69 in Hondo, 67 in Tarpley, and 64 in Lost Maples. Like I said, these clouds that are out there right now are going to clear out probably by noon, honestly, and it would be a great day to get some yard work done. You know, we had a little drizzle yesterday in the morning, uh, but by the afternoon we'll have total sunshine. It'll be 88 degrees. Just a reminder that once again, we are under stage one water restrictions, so keep that in mind if you have any yard work to do, but hand watering is perfectly fine. Uh, no real chance for rain today, uh, and looking ahead, it's going to be an interesting week. Uh, I'll talk more about today's warmth and uh, just how hot we'll get around the KSAT 12 viewing area, but tomorrow we get that wishy-washy cool front that's going to push through some parts of the hill country, but probably not even make it to San Antonio. I'll tell you what that means for our weather in San Antonio and what it does to our chance for clouds and temperatures being a little bit on the cooler side. And then, of course, we'll talk about how Hottober continues. Max. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. A jarring story to tell you about. Police tell us that it was actually a Facebook post that let multiple law enforcement agencies know about street racing and they actually used overnight to target some of those suspects. That's right. San Antonio tracking down drivers with the intent to race, destroy property and spin out and do donuts. Our Alicia Beretta is live downtown with more on this police roundup operation. Good morning, Alicia. Did were there multiple arrests involved? Hey, good morning. Yeah, definitely a lot of arrests of involved. Um, it was multiple Facebook posts that tipped off officers, and they say that these Facebook posts were really, really specific with time and location, making it easy for agents to track them down. But anyhow, it was a big task as hundreds of drivers took on the streets last night. This operation started around 8 last night, and agents worked overnight. Agencies including SAPD Special Crimes, DWI, and Tactical Response Unit, as well as Helicopter Eagle, along with Bear County Sheriff's Office, started the roundup at 8. Investigators say those involved raced on the interstate and frontage roads, did burnouts and spun donuts in parking lots, and destroyed property. Arrests were made across San Antonio, including at Roosevelt and Military, Marbach Road and 410, 410 at Ingram, Highway 151 at Callahan, and 281 at Bassey. And there you see some of the people that were arrested. Police say they don't have an exact headcount of how many arrests were made just yet, but we do know those charges range from racing to DWI, destruction of property, and possession of uh, possession of firearm or, or drugs. And according to officers, the street racers were allegedly competing with other um, other major cities here in Texas, including Houston and Dallas. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, the San Antonio Police Department has fired one of their own after he was charged with a felony sexual assault assault charge, according to city records. Umberto Zuniga is accused of sexually assaulting a woman he met through a dating website. The affidavit states he told the woman to not call the police because, quote, no one would believe her. The 42 year old was arrested on August 6th and, and released on bond the same day. He was handed an indefinite suspension two days later. Well, turning now to the massive nationwide push to get people to the polls. That's right. As ABC's Alex Prochet reports, more celebrities are pitching in, and they're doing so in their own ways. This morning, an urgent push to get out the vote. Women's marches this weekend from Washington, D.C. to L.A. with a specific emphasis. Go out and vote, man. Already, more than 26 million Americans have voted early, both parties pushing more to show up to the polls. The RNC announced it's committing 60 million to a voter campaign this month with social media, text messages, and email. 
Former First Lady Michelle Obama teaming up with LeBron James and others for a voter initiative. Starting today, they're providing transportation and personal protective equipment for early voters through the end of the month. We want change. We have to make it ourselves. Michelle Obama sending this challenge on Twitter to round up a voting squad. Celebrities responding in mass. If you vote early, do it now. I am voting this year because, well, come on. Do you know how to vote? I Lady Gaga with her own voting initiative pinning this song. Had the last four numbers of your social security number and you'll need your home address. The importance of the Latinx vote front and center. The RNC made this voter registration site entirely in Spanish late last month. Use your vote! The push to vote is strong in the LBGTQ community, too. You're looking at exclusive scenes from Drag Out the Vote's special streaming tonight, Divas for Democracy, featuring stars like Alice and Janney, the nonprofit aimed at increasing election awareness in the community. I found out that one in five LGBTQ people weren't registered to vote in the 2016 election. A hundred million people didn't vote in the last election. A hundred million people! And that was so shocking to me. Social media giants Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat trying to improve those numbers, all pushing voting registration for users this election. And that push seems to be working. Snapchat announcing it has helped 750,000 of its U.S. users register to vote. Alex Perche, ABC News, Arlington, Virginia. Also in your morning headlines, the Texas unemployment rate up to 8.3% in September. When, as we should mention, seven months into this economic recession. So according to the Texas Workforce Commission, that is a sharp increase from the August unemployment rate of 6.8%. The uptick shows some industries that have hoped to weather the pandemic's economic recession. They've not been able to do so. Instead, they have since announced large numbers of layoffs. The U.S. Department of Labor expected to release the state-by-state -state unemployment rates numbers on Tuesday. The U.S. Senate will take up a standalone Paycheck Protection Program bill on Tuesday. According to the Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Republicans and Democrats have been deadlocked on another round of stimulus as well as paycheck protection. Senator McConnell says the Senate will take up a separate $500 billion stimulus bill on Wednesday, but that's a package the Democrats blocked last month and may be unlikely to be reconsidered. The Republican measure is well short of more than $2 trillion relief package House Speaker Nancy Pelosi wants. Meanwhile, headed back to the polls, we still don't know what happens if Joe Biden wins the election. We don't know if there's going to be a peaceful transition of power. Take a listen. Then they say, they're taking away me. I'm taking away their freedom. Then they say, if you lose, will you have a friendly transition? I say, I want a fair election. Then they say, will you have a fair? We want a fair and friendly transition. I said, really? Well, when I won, you spied on my campaign. We caught you trying to overthrow the president of the United States. Uh, the president went on to say that people are crooked. And to him, quote, that didn't exactly look like a friendly transition, end quote. Time now, 839, 71 degrees out. Well, just ahead, J-Lo is helping a presidential nominee gain Latino votes. Details on the recent endorsement. Plus, a major movie chain getting creative when it comes to getting more revenue. How much you can rent a private movie screening for? I'm excited. If you had to watch one movie, what would it be? I don't, I don't That's know. That's a hard question. I have to think. You can't just ask me about that off the bat, Max. You have to give well, start thinking. We'll have the answer after the break. And Sarah Spivey will have the answer to your forecast when we come back. One debate left, over 20 million votes already cast. How will it all end? Today, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and the Republican National Committee Chair, live and exclusive, face George. Plus, the Powerhouse Roundtable takes it all on, today on This Week with George. In your consumer news today, the pandemic has left many Americans struggling financially, and that means some won't be able to make their mortgage or rent payments. Last month, more than 6 million Americans failed to make payments on their homes. That's according to the Mortgage Bankers Association Research Institute for Housing Americans. The Trump administration did recently put a moratorium on evictions for people making less than $99,000 a year, but that ends on December 31st.
And here's a trend that might entice you back into the movie theaters to rent your own personal screening room for $99. AMC Theaters is letting customers rent out auditoriums for private screenings, a growing trend because of the coronavirus. You're allowed to invite up to 20 friends and family members to join you. AMC is joining other cinemas and the new offering, which is designed to keep them afloat after record breaking losses due to the pandemic. And Chicago has officially taken the title of I don't like this video behind me. It creeps me out. It's the rattiest city for the sixth year in the row. <laughs> Pest control company Orkin ranks the top 50 U.S. cities every year based on its rodent treatment data. Chi-Town has been working to tame its rat population for years. The city even started a rat task force in 2016 and encouraged residents to adopt cats to help control the rodent population. There you go. All right. Change gears a little bit in your morning spotlight. Jenny from the block stepping into the political sphere. Jennifer Lopez and Alice Rodriguez endorsing Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. In a video the couple released, they encouraged Latinos to vote in the November 3rd election or why not start voting early? Biden and his wife Jill also featured in the video where they commit to having Latinos in the administration if Joe is elected. Let's take this one away. All right, Ariana Grande has announced plans to drop a new album this month. The Grammy Award winning singer tweeted Wednesday, quote, I can't wait to give you my album this month. It would be Grande's sixth this year. Grande has collaborated with Justin Bieber for Stick With You, Lady Gaga for Rain On Me. And I just wanted to save this one for me. Nickelodeon's <laughs> popular Paw Patrol cartoon series making the jump to the big screen. We got an all-star cast. We got Kim Kardashian, didn't know she was an actress. Jimmy Kimmel, didn't know he was an actor. And Tyler Perry lending their voices to the adventures of the six cartoon rescue dogs. Their motto is no job is too big, no pup is too small. Paw Patrol, the movie with the celebrity voice cast set to hit theaters August 2021. Before the break, we talked about kind of that AMC story where you can rent your own private theater, which I think is a genius idea. $100 steals like a I'm steal sorry. for 20 people. Max had some serious opinions there. <laughs> There's no opinions. I just I present the facts as they exist. All right, anyway, so one movie you could watch right now, what would it be? Forrest Gump. That was a good one, Sarah. Oh, one I, movie that I like to watch over and over again is Godfather Part Two. Great. Because there's, it's honestly one of the best movie, if not the best movie of all time. There's so many different nuances you pick up. Great acting, filmed in the 70s. Looks like it could have been filmed today as the Godfather. There you go. <laughs> all right, well. It's a forecast. I, yeah. Speaking of forecasts, I want to show you the clouds outside right now. Uh, we have got cloud cover to begin the day. Get used to this because over the next several days, we are going to have morning clouds. And it's all about when these morning clouds will give way to afternoon sun. I think that this morning the clouds are going to clear out fairly quickly here, probably starting by mid morning, seeing those clouds clear. And then by noon, we should have plenty of sunshine. It is 71 degrees outside. We've got good visibility locally, but but visibility has been up and down a mixture of uh, some patchy morning fog, especially out to the west, uh, west of San Antonio. Winds are from the south at about 10 miles per hour right now, and it's a little bit cooler out to the west. 67 in Rio Medina, 69 in Hondo, 67 in Bandera, 66 in Kerrville. I mentioned that we're 71 in San Antonio yesterday. We only got up to 74 degrees because the clouds were stubborn. And like I said, we're going to see these clouds clear out here uh, fairly shortly at 67 in Del Rio, 63 in Carrizo Springs, 73 down in Laredo. Here's the satellite. You can make out where the clouds are. I'll go ahead and outline them with my finger there. Uh, they are pretty much around Bear County and off to the west, but these clouds are going to dissipate uh, and you can see that in the future cast by noon. It'll be nice and sunny around San Antonio and unfortunately it'll be warm too because when you get the sunshine, temperatures going to warm up and that's the weather we've been given today around San Antonio highs in the upper 80s uh, right along that I 35 corridor as well up into the hill country upper 80s mid 90s for Del Rio today. So it's going to be hot toward Del Rio and hot toward Laredo high temperature in the low 90s there. On top of that, there's going to be mugginess that we're going to have to deal with today. Dew points are fairly high. Dew points in the upper 60s are near 70 degrees. That's the top of our humidity scale. So be ready for a muggy day, maybe 
feeling a little bit hotter than 88 because of a heat index value. So we'll have clearing skies. We'll be at 75 at 10. At noon, we'll be partly cloudy and breezy. South winds at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20. And then muggy in the afternoon. And temperatures will struggle to cool down tonight. We'll still be in the upper 70s by 9 p.m. Showing you the national weather pattern. I'm going to talk about this front that's you know, it's not going to make it to San Antonio as a whole. It is bringing some very cold air across parts of the uh, panhandle. Look at that temperatures falling already and temperatures in the teens well up toward Canada behind this front and I'll take you through time here and what you'll notice is that we'll start the day tomorrow across the state of Texas with drastically different temperatures. You tune in, you watch Mike tomorrow morning or Justin tomorrow morning. I guarantee you they'll be showing this temperature map 40s up in the panhandle and it'll still be in the 70s here in San Antonio. By the way, tomorrow morning we will start off with clouds and I think there's a good bet to see some drizzle tomorrow morning as well. And then that front is going to just kind of wash out and fall apart across the hill country in Austin. And so Austin could be on the cool side of the front with temperatures only getting up into the 60s or the 70s. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, I just don't think it's going to have enough oomph to make it through the, the Alamo City itself. So we'll go for a high of 85 tomorrow again with that drizzle and some sunshine in the afternoon from that stalled front. And then in the week ahead, morning clouds every morning, afternoon sunshine, it'll be warm with a high temperature in the upper 80s. We get another front though on Friday. It looks good to see a cooler and more pleasant weekend. Uh, but again, tomorrow we're going to be paying close attention to where that front ultimately stalls out. Thank you, Sarah. All right, thanks, Sarah. 850, 71 degrees out. Well, the pandemic, the pandemic can make parents feel stressed or overwhelmed, especially if you are doing more around the house to keep it cleaned or maintained. That's right. But tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you more about the seemingly radical idea putting your kids in charge. Ooh, bold, it's a bold move, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off. All right, take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, zero, three, eight, fireball two, daily four, one, five, nine, one, fireball three. Cash five, one, eight, nine, 14, 30, Texas lotto, 13, 16, 24, 27, 29, 31. And Powerball, six, 10, 31, 37, 44, Powerball 23, power play two, Welcome back in the news you need to know before you go. A man in serious condition this morning after being thrown from his motorcycle. Police on the scene tell us that he was traveling southbound on I-37. He hit the guardrail on the 410 entrance ramp. He suffered a broken leg and head trauma. And as police were tending to the motorcyclist, another driver passing by actually got distracted by the crash. He rear-ended another vehicle. Luckily, though, no injuries reported in the second wreck. As you can see, it's still cloudy outside, but we are going to see those clouds break up and it'll be a sunny and hot day in the afternoon. Well, hot according to October standards, a high temperature in the upper 80s. South winds at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20, so a bit of a breeze as well. Tomorrow we'll get a stalled front north of San Antonio. Mm. So areas in Austin and the Hill Country could be significantly cooler than us here in San Antonio. But what I do think is going to happen is I think we'll have um, some morning drizzle and a temperature probably in the 80s. So again, not as warm as today, but definitely on the warm side. All right. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday.